Okay, now um, I just want to talk a little bit about why, why we go into the we go into the water, we go into this crazy sea, and um, some things happen along with the theme of, of being on the sea in a ship is a related idea of sinking into the depths and calling out to the Lord from the depths. And we have that um, in some of these psalms and elsewhere. And I'm just going to touch on a few of these before I wrap this talk up. They that go down to the sea in ships, these see, uh, that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord and His wonders in the deep. Hema ra'u ma'asei adnai v'naflaotayev b'mitz... Mitzulah. Mitzulah is the deep. So the, we go into the waters, but then we sink into the depths. So if you find you're in the miry clay and it's sinking into the depths, um, it's, not, it's an experience that I think all believers will f experience at some stage. For thou hadst, in Jonah we read, for thou hadst cast me into the deep. Vatish lechaini but mitzulah. Thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. It's not just Yeshua that that happened to. Yes, perfectly it happened to him. But if we are in Mashiach, it will happen to us to some degree. Because we are crucified with him. And indeed it happens to all the saints. All those that have uh, ever been have been tested and, and, tri and tried, some more than others. Jonah certainly experienced it, and Jonah is the dove, which represents Israel. He, he was thrown into the sea because he wasn't doing what the Lord wanted it to, just like Zion fell from heaven to earth. There's something going on. I haven't put my finger on exactly everything. But there's something that happened before Adam that's related to Zion. There's something now that's fallen. Yes, we fell in Adam, but... That first, that, 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 the, uh, there, there are seven nuns representing the seven days of creation. So there was something that was already fallen in the water in day one of creation, which wasn't the first day. There was Yom Ahad, it wasn't Yom Rishon. The first day of creation when God said, Yehi Or, Vahi Or, when God said, let there be light and there was light. That wasn't the first day of creation, that was day one of a recreation. So something fell into the water, and we'll talk about this soon. Now, I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. Now this is one of my favorite psalms because it's pretty miserable, and it really makes me feel better <laughs> because I, I so identify with the psalmist. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit in darkness. I, I pray to the Lord that I may know what Joseph, uh, that I may suffer with Joseph because I felt like I was from Levi and so I, I knew that Levi had done wrong to Joseph so I, I prayed to suffer with him and uh, by God he knows how to answer that one. Uh, Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit in darkness in the deeps, thy wrath lieth hard upon me and thou hast afflicted me with all thy waves, seller. God is, we're, we've always been his sheep if we're born of him. But there came a time when the chief shepherd whistled and called out our name. We responded to the gospel. My sheep hear my voice. Now, we've got to endure to the end. But um, the seed of God are those that keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Yeshua. And uh, those that are truly born of him will endure to the end. No matter what happens, there's nowhere else for me to go but to the Lord. There's nowhere else to go. You alone have the words of eternal life. My seed, hear my voice. There's, um, there's good Israel and bad Israel. There's good nations and bad nations. There's some of Edom that get saved. Most of Edom goes to hell in a handbasket. Um, but his seed is those that, are, that keep his commandments. Now, um, there's something in the deep. And another, uh, he maketh, this is about Leviathan in Job 41. And, and Leviathan makes the deep to boil like a pot. He makes the sea like a pot of ointment. That's a very, that's a very strange, I, I still don't quite understand what he's trying to say. 
but, but essentially he's making it boil. I do understand that. The waves and the nations are, 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 are you know, frothing about. We see that in the world today. Satan is the one stirring it all up. It's through his movement, through the, the waves, through the nations, which are his children, and many of them anyway. And he, the river is mine, says Pharaoh. And he, he makes it to boil. He makes the river, he owns the river and he makes the sea to boil. The depths have covered, now thankfully there's something that's going to happen. Although we can go down to the depths, we rise up again from our struggles. But Pharaoh and his army are a picture of Satan being cast out of heaven. And uh, the, the depths have covered them. So the Song of Moses in Exodus 15 is, is more than just something about something that happened. It's some, about something that will happen. All of those songs are speaking of the past and the future. So as I spoke to you before, right at the beginning with the 15, uh, the ark was 15 cubits above the, the water. So the bride will actually uh, ascend through the struggles and trials of the tribulation. She will, uh, she will become uh, clothed with the sun, standing on the moon with the 12 stars about her head, and the dragon won't be able to touch her. After we go down to the depths of the sea, it is time to raise us up. And in a sense, we're in that sea in a much... Just the, the very fact that the house of Israel is amongst the nations, lost her identity. You can't get too much more in the sea than that. And just as uh, uh, Jonah was in a deep sleep, so all of Israel is in a deep sleep now. It's only now that we're waking up to the Torah. Okay, but we've been receiving the Messiah all along, but now we're beginning to really wake up. It's like we've been dreaming, but we, we reach out to the Messiah in our dream. And now we're beginning to open our eyes while still holding on to the Messiah. So now we're beginning to wake up and, uh, uh, from the depths of the sea. We're starting to wake up. We're, we're not like Jonah that's in the, in the boat and is, uh, and is asleep. We're beginning to wake up. Noah's ark was raised 15 cubits above the mountains. There are also 15 songs of ascent, and as I've spoken to you about before, sung by the Levites on 15 steps during the libation ceremony at Sukkot. Tabernacles. So if we want to get to the thousand year millennial reign, the bride must ascend. And the very flood that comes down from heaven, when Satan comes out, uh, thrown out of heaven and he spews out the water from his mouth, tries to consume the woman, that's peoples and nations as I understand it, plus a third of the angels. I don't know how many angels there are in heaven, but if I count the stars at night, I, I soon go to sleep. There's a lot of them. How they're all going to fit on this little planet, I don't know. But a, th a third of the angels is some mighty host that is just absolutely gobsmackingly large. And, um, and when they flood this earth, the earth opens up a mouth just like Cor it did for Korah. It's the only other place with time where it mentions the earth opening up its mouth. So Korah is a picture of Satan, the Levitical singer who wanted to be a priest. Do you think that flood is the angels? The, the, the flood is, comes out of his mouth. I, I believe it's uh, peoples and nations. We know that that's a standard thing for water. And there's nations in the heavens too. There's nations of angels, if you like. There's angelic thrones and dominions and powers. And it's, there's a big structure up there. As it is in heaven, so it is below. If we've got an, heavenly, if we've got an earthly Yerushalayim, we've got a heavenly one. Everything down here is just a picture of what's up there. But the, but the purpose of creation is to bring that down here to some degree. Uh, 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 and, and for heaven and earth to be sort of married in one. And we see that in the book of Revelation. At the end of the thousand years, the heavenly Jerusalem comes down on the new earth. So in a sense, Yeshua is reigning on the earth for a thousand years, but it's not the end of the flood quite yet. Satan is kept in a pit, but then he's released for a short time at the end of the thousand years. So in a sense, the sea is finally, utterly and completely dealt with, with the great white throne judgment and the casting of Satan and his angels and uh, the wicked 
which are his angels, uh, into the lake of fire. So that's the final dealing with it. Um, but essentially, there's 15 songs of ascent for the bride to make herself ready. And she makes herself ready through the travail of the tribulation. Midway through it, she's shining. Those five foolish virgins and five wise, they've separated. Foolish ones are cut off by the Antichrist, whatever's going on there. But the good bride is in the wilderness and she's safe. And, um, and, and she gives birth to someone. I'm going to talk about that soon. Uh, so uh, these 15 songs of ascent that are sung during the water libation ceremony, interesting it's water of all metaphors, um, they represent the bride rising in holiness to meet the groom. There is some trauma in these last 15 da days, or last day's steps. This affliction is necessary. In the Song of Songs, the bride isn't ready. And she goes, ah. And um, she's playing with her hair and um, she misses the boat. And she has to walk around the city and get beaten up. The bride gives birth to the man-child in Revelation chapter 12. The fallen axe head rises. This man-child is related to the iron that rises. I'm going to talk about this now and wrap this up. In 2 Kings chapter 6 we read, So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, which represents death, going to the Jordan is representing death, they cut down wood, cut down trees, people. But as one was uh, felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and in he Hebrew it's not axe head, it's et habazel, the iron. The iron fell. So the head's just called, actually it's just called iron. The iron fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. Sha'ol, related to Sheol, the grave, and, and Shul, the king. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it thither. And the iron did swim. Well, that's very interesting. That the iron swam. I know that fish swim. Oh, that reminds me of uh, Joshua ben Nun. And that reminds me of the Nun. And what is these fish? They're the children of God swimming. So, um, did Israel fall? Did the man-child? Will it be raised? That's the subject of another talk that I, I talked about. But um, uh, let me just continue. Therefore, said he, take it up. To thee, and he put it out. He put out his hand and took it. Now, remember the there's the, the the woman in the wilderness, and she gives birth to a son. There's a connection. Here.